Good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending um, our Pride flag raising event today, helping us celebrate and kick off Pride Month in 2022. I'd like to thank uh, Councilmember Foley for uh, representing the mayor and the city council today, our LGBTQ plus advisory board, our LGBTQ plus officers, and our community for also attending here today. Four years ago, we became the first major police department in the country to raise the rainbow flag showing solidarity and support of our LGBTQ plus community, department members, and others. I want our community to know that I am committed and proud to continue this tradition of diversity and inclusion, and will continue to work towards eliminating harassment, discrimination, and hate in our communities. This flag demonstrates our pride and support of our LGBTQ plus officers, dispatchers, and professional staff, and of our LGBTQ plus community who we proudly serve every day. This flag also allows us to acknowledge the struggles and challenges the LGBTQ plus community has endured. I know our work isn't done, but I am committed to listen and engage with our community to build a better community. Displaying this flag during Pride Month as an ally or a LGBTQ plus member is something to be proud of as we continue to work towards inclusiveness and uplifting all communities and all people. So once again, thank you all for being here today and in support of not only the police department, but our LGBTQ plus officers and community uh, at this event. I would like to now introduce uh, Councilmember Pam Foley. Thank you, Chief Mata. As Chief introduced me as Councilmember Pam Foley, I represent District 9, which is in the southern part of the, of the city. But today I'm honored to represent the city of San Jose in this ceremony raising the rainbow flag. I stand before you as a loud and proud ally of the LGBTQ plus community. Pride began as an event to acknowledge the Stonewall Riots where members of the gay and trans community were victimized in New York over 50 years ago. Since then, the LGBTQ plus community has fought to obtain equal protection and rights that other groups have achieved, such as the right to marry. In those early years of the struggle, struggle my own brother Tim, who was victimized by our church, community, and sadly the police department. My brother has since passed away from AIDS, but if he were alive today, he would be delighted to see me at a celebration to raise the pride flag at the police department. He would be so proud of how far we have all come and thank you for embracing our LGBTQ plus brethren. In fact, Tim would actually find it ironic that I'm here, but that's just who my brother was. It may seem that there's been a shift in how we embrace members of the LGBTQ plus community, but we must all always acknowledge that these are rights are under attack. So we, we must work harder to recognize, support, and protect members of the trans community and the broader LGBTQ plus community. I'm honored to participate in this acknowledgement by the San Jose Police Department as to how important it is to embrace the diversity in our population and in the ranks of men and women who serve with this department. This is a symbol of our commitment to our LGBTQ plus community at all levels. Our commitment to serve and protect everyone, regardless of who they love or how they identify. Embracing our LGBTQ plus community does not stop with one group or another. Rather, all must be included. Inclusion means everyone, regardless of how we serve the community. We depend on you to protect us and we in turn must support you. The flag raising to, this flag raising today, the work of the San Jose Police Department's 
LGBTQ plus advisory board, and the creation of the Safe Spaces program are ways this department is working to support our LGBTQ plus community. You are to be commended, but there's still much work to be done. Straight allies like myself need to be louder and prouder than ever before to ensure that we stand up for and celebrate our LGBTQ family, friends, colleagues, and neighbors. That's why today I celebrate my brother, my daughter, and her girlfriend, all of you in the police department, and all the members of the LGBTQ plus community. Thank you for keeping our residents safe. To Chief Mata, the command staff, and all members of the San Jose Police Department, thank you to your commitment for supporting us, each other, regardless of whom they love or their gender identity. With that, I'd like to welcome up Officer Edwin Martinez. Officer Martinez has been with the San Jose Police Department for five years and is currently assigned to the San Jose Police Assaults Unit. Officer. Thank you, uh, thank you, Council Member Foley, for that brief introduction. Thank you all for being here. I'm grateful to be part of the San Jose Police Department Pride Flag Raising Ceremony. Thank you to Ch uh, Chief Mata of the police, uh, police Department for the ongoing support to the LGBTQIA plus members of the department and the city of San Jose. The rainbow flag was created in 1978 by artist designer and Vietnam War veteran, Gilbert Baker. He was commissioned to create the flag by another gay icon, politician Harvey Milk, for San Francisco's annual Pride Parade. If you haven't seen the movie Milk, watch it. Powerful and educational, even for me. The decision to enlist Baker proved timely as the idea of the flag to represent the gay and lesbian community had occurred to him two years earlier. As Baker said during an interview, he was inspired by the celebrations marking America's bicentennial, noting that the display of stars and stripes that we all love made him realize the need for a similar rallying sign for the gay community. He was ready to, the, uh, he was ready to create the soon to be iconic symbol, the rainbow flag. At the time, the commonly used image for the gay rights movement was the pink triangle, a symbol used by the Nazis to identify homosexuals who were sent to prison after being freed from Holocaust camps. Using a symbol with such a dark and painful past was never an option for Baker. He instead opted to use a rainbow and, and his inspiration. The different colors within the flag were meant to represent togetherness since LGBT people come in all races, ages, and genders around the world, and rainbows are both natural and beautiful. With the help of close to 30 volunteers working in secrecy in the attic of the Gay Community Center in San Francisco, Baker was able to construct the first draft of the now world-renowned rainbow flag. It was first showcased at San Francisco's Pride Parade in 1978, and now used worldwide, even in San Jose. In 2019, the San Jose Police Department became one of the first police departments in the nation to, pl uh, to fly the pride uh, flag. I am honored to have the opportunity not only to support my community, but to support my department and its ongoing commitment, commitment to equality and diversity. Again, thank you for being here and for your support. Our hope is that this type of ceremony is someday not needed. Thank you. I would like to introduce CSO Supervisor Chuck Hill, who has been with the department for nine years. Hi, I'm Chuck Hill. I am the supervisor and manager of the Community Service Officer Program for San Jose. I feel, yay, yeah, I feel uh, truly privileged, and it's such an honor to work for a, a department and a city that values inclusion and diversity. Uh, Denise Alvarez, who's our LGBTQ uh, liaison, asked me when I said I was, when she told me I would be speaking, said, just say what the flag means to you, Chuck. And I have to say the flag means a lot to me. 
The flag is a welcome mat for people like me, someone like me who's 60 years old, who 35 years ago began his career in public service working for the federal government where I was, I was directly asked if I was a homosexual and I would have been disqualified from, the, from my position. And uh, if, I, if I had answered yes, FYI, I lied. So anyway, the, um, I, I ended up getting the job and so many of us did. And so many of us had to make up partners, had to make up what we were doing on weekends, had to maintain this facade in order to keep our jobs. So to have a, an organization moving forward like this, that actually puts out a welcome mat for us that says we're not only welcome here, we're included and we're striving to, 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 uh, um, to improve the visibility of our, our gay officers and gay employees. So it means a lot to me. And I, I, can't, I can't tell you how much it means to other members, those who are still not comfortable coming out and those of us who are out and, uh, and proud to be living our authentic lives. So um, again, bravo to, to the department and to the continued support that I've received from command staff here. Um, for the past six years, I've been teaching the diversity class to incoming recruits, which is a 36 hour class where we take the recruits down to the Billy to Frank Center and expose them to, to a, um, a panel of members of the LGBTQ community and they get to ask questions and learn more about the community and why we have a strained relationship with law enforcement. So, so it's, it's been just an incredible journey. I can't say enough about, about the support that I've received since I've been here. And as many of you know, I'm long-winded, so I'll stop here. And I know it's starting to get hot out. And I will introduce my very, very close friend and ally, Gabrielle Antolovich is the president of the Billy DeFrank LGBTQ Plus Community Center. Welcome to Pride Month. <laughs> and I have to say, because I'm at the Billy DeFrank LGBTQ Plus Community Center, it's pride all the time. And I keep adding more pride stuff around. During COVID, uh, well, first of all, I want to say thank you to Mayor Sam Licardo for organizing the Rainbow Crosswalk by the Billy DeFrank Center. What that did was, instead of only being inside the center, we now walk out and people walk across that crosswalk and come in because I really wanted allies to know that we are a welcoming place if you like us. That's a joke. <laughs> anyway, I want to say that my story is the flip side of Chuck's. I came out publicly gay on national television in Australia in 1970 and I couldn't get a job because they didn't want to, you know, they said, we don't mind you being homosexual. That was the term back then, but you're too out about it. You, everybody knows who you are. And so I couldn't get a job and there were no anti-discrimination policies in the 1970s yet. So, I had to embrace poverty, but I've never given up on being who I am. <laughs> so I've had a lot of practice at being who I am. I am not just queer, I am genderqueer, non-binary. And I have to thank the young people in our community for the terminology that we never had when we were non-binary all along. So thank you to the younger generation for teaching us older folks to grow even more. I also want to uh, thank Chief Mata for continuing the program that Chuck Hill and I started at the Billy DeFrank Center. It was kind of controversial at first. You know, come on, come in, have all the recruits come in, um, for each academy and listen to a panel of LGBTQs talk about who we are. 
And that's a big deal for us and also the recruits. And Chuck told me today that half the department has been at the Billy DeFrank Center. And we were blessed to have um, Chief Mata actually sit and listen to the entire panel. And he was so inspired that the recruits now go to Little Saigon as well as coming to the Billy DeFrank Center and the Sikh Temple. And it's a way of, if we are who we are, things will grow bigger and better, despite what's going on in the world. I'm really seeing so much hope and that we have to continue to be bold. Thank you, Chief Mata, for being bold and continuing to support the LGBTQ plus community. Thank you to the Academy for supporting us being part of the Academy. I know you do a lot of post um, trainings about LGBTQs in the Academy, but we are the more folksy kind of training. And um, if Chief Mata allows you as an employee to come along, we would welcome you to sit in on our panel and see what we're like. We're actually quite fabulous. <laughs> we just love being who we are in Silicon Valley. I love that San Jose City Council and the mayor, I know things are gonna change um, because of the elections, but I don't see their support changing. I see it continuing. And I always tease um, council member Pam Foley that she is the people's mayor <laughs> because she is so supportive of our community. So anyway, Pam Foley, uh, council member Pam Foley is gonna continue to be at city council. So if anyone speaks against us, you know she's gonna be at them. So anyway, um, I wanna say that no matter how awful things are, we are family and we are siblings. All of the, we are the only minority group that encompasses all other minorities. We are African American, we are indigenous, we are Latinx, we are Asian, we are immigrants, we are undocumented immigrants, we are everything that's part of the community, even whoever I left out. And that makes it important for us to connect with everyone. And I've been, I'm putting out a newsletter asking our LGBTQs, go to Juneteenth, immerse yourself in African American culture, talk to people, Ask them how we can support you because they have gone through a lot of tragedy. And the NAACP was so heartened by that, they've asked us to join their table at Juneteenth. So that's how relationships develop. And that's what I, as the board president of the Billy DeFrank Center, wanted to do with San Jose PD. You know, I want to, wanted us to be the bridge because um, I was once involved with a woman in law enforcement and I experienced the most amazing thing about how each department is like a family. And when she left me, I missed the family more than her. <laughs> and um, so I know you know what family means in law enforcement. That's what the LGBTQ community is. We are family and you are our siblings because a lot of you are LGBTQ. Woohoo! Isn't that amazing? We have an overlap. And so family it's important to the LGBTQ community. We are the only minority that is rejected by our own families. And so we've had to create our chosen family. 
you at least have a job <laughs> and have a chosen family among yourselves. We have to find family no matter who we are. And it's hard. It's very hard. But we are family. And I almost want that song to come up about how we are family. And if you're old enough, you remember that that was a worldwide song. And it is still something that means a lot today. So anyway, have a wonderful pride. Come to the Billy DeFrank Center on Sunday. Viva Calle is going along the Alameda and we are going to have a queer concert, disco on the rainbow crosswalk and drag queens performing. So come on down and meet us and I'll give you a tour of the center. Thank you again. Uh, this concludes our, uh, our event today and um, wishing everyone a happy Pride Month. Thank you. <laughs>